A few weeks ago, we released a video that showed how to fill down over blank cells using a formula. Now that video wasn't specifically about that technique, but lots of people reached out and said, yes, that's exactly the technique I need. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. How can we fill down over blank cells, but using a formula? So if you're ready, let's get started. Here in Excel, we have our data set. You can see we have the item column, which contains alpha and then some blank cells, Bravo and blank cells and Charlie with blank cells. After that, we have our region column and that also contains values with blank cells. All we want to do is to create a formula so that it always displays the value from above if the cell is blank. Now, members of our Excel Academy have access to our function vault add-in and also our quick calc library. And in there, it contains lots of Lambda functions. So I could select FX fill blank cells and click insert. Then to use it, I just type equals FX. We can see FX blank cells. There are various arguments in there. We could just select our range, close that bracket and calculate. And that now fills all of those blank cells. For the rest of this video, we are going to build a simplified version to fill down to replace any blanks. For our solution, we will be using the scan function. Now we released a video about scan a few weeks ago. So if you don't know how scan works, then go and watch that video first. Okay, now let's go and build our solution. In cell G4, I'll type equals scan opening bracket. Our initial value is going to be an empty text string. The next argument is the array. These are the cells that we want to loop over. And we're going to select the cells B4 down to E27. After that, we have the function argument. Now for this, we want to check whether each of our values is blank. If it is blank, we want to return the previous value. And if it's not blank, we want to return that value. So we need to use the Lambda function and we have two variables. We have the accumulator and we have the value. We're going to use SA for our accumulator, meaning scan accumulator. And for the value, we're going to use SV, which is our scan value. Then we come to our formula. So if open bracket is blank. So we're checking if a cell is blank and which cell do we want to check? We want to check our specific value. We can then close the is blank. And if it is blank, we want to return the accumulator, which is our SA. If it's not blank, we want to return SV. We can then close our if, close our lambda and close our scan. When we calculate that, it doesn't give us what we expect. And that's because scan works across columns before it moves to the next row. So to make this work, we're going to add in some transpose functions. We need to transpose our array, but we also need to transpose our final result back. So we've got transpose there, and when we calculate, and that now gives us the result that we want. Fantastic. The problem is, what happens if one of the first rows in our array is blank? So if I take the north value and I delete that, you'll see that the region now displays Charlie, which is the values from the previous column, which means we can't just use scan in this way. We need to take a slightly different approach. What we need to do is to perform a scan on each individual column. And then using the reduce function, we can combine all of those columns together in the final result. So let's change our scan function again. We're going to remove our transpose because we no longer need that. And we can also remove that from our array. So if we want to perform a scan on a single column, we can use choose coles. We have our array and let's suggest we just want to perform this on the first column. When we close that bracket and calculate, it performs this replacing values, but it only performs it on the first column. Now we're going to use this formula later. So I'm going to copy that and bring this up here and we will then enter this as a value. Now it's time to build our stacking mechanism. By this, I mean we'll calculate our first column and then stack on our second column and then the third column and then the fourth column. 
Now for this, we are going to use the reduce function, which has a very similar syntax to scan. Now I admit our formula will become quite complex. So we are going to use the let function to break our formula down into individual steps. And I'm going to start here in cell G4, let open in bracket. Now let enables us to calculate interim values and then use them later in our calculation. The first name we're going to create is array. And that is going to reference our cells from B4 down to E27. The next name we want to create is col index. And we want to create a list of numbers depending on the number of columns that we have. So we can use sequence, opening bracket, and then we're going to use the number of columns in our array. I can close both those brackets. Now let's just create a new line. The last argument for let is the value that we want to output. So let's output our col index. When we calculate that, you can see it returns the numbers one to four, and that's because we have four columns in our array. Let's now build our stacking mechanism. We'll call the name stack. And for this, we're going to use the reduce function. Reduce, just like scan, has an initial value. We're going to enter an empty text string. We then have our array. Now we want to loop over our column index because we want to perform the scan on column one, and then on column two, then on column three, and then on column four. So for our array, I'll use col index. And then we come to our function. All we're going to do is build a function that stacks up each column. So it takes column one and then stacks on column two and then stacks on column three and then stacks on column four. For this, we need to use the lambda function. Now we're gonna pass across two values into our lambda function. And just as scan has an accumulator and a value, reduce has the same arguments. We're gonna call these RA for reduce accumulator and RV for reduce value. Now, by the end of this video, we will nest our scan into the reduce. And that's why we've used RA and RV for the reduce and SA and SV for the scan. So we know which variables apply to which functions. So if we want to start stacking our results, we're going to use the HStack function. And we want to stack the previous result, which is RA. And then onto that, we want to stack the choose calls of our array and we want to stack each individual column. So that'll be RV. If you remember, we are looping over our column index. So RV represents the column one, and then column two, and then column three, and then column four. I can close the choose calls, close the H stack, close the lambda, and close the reduce. Let's now output this result so we can see what it looks like. There you can see that we have a column that's filled with NA values. And then after that, we have each of our individual columns where the blank cells have been replaced with zeros. Now we need to drop our first column. So let's edit our formula and let's create a step called result. And that is going to be the drop of our stack. We want to drop the first column. We can then output this. And as you can see, we now have the columns in the right place. So far, all we've done is taken our original array and stack those columns back together. But we've also got our scan calculation from earlier. And we know that this calculation worked on a column by column basis. So I'm going to copy our scan and let's enter that into our reduce function. So I'm going to replace our choose calls and I'm going to paste our scan. Now our choose calls here, that needs to be based on our array. And then what column do we want? That's going to be replaced with RV. And when we calculate that, we now get the results that we want. In the item column, it fills down with the value from above. In the region column, it fills down with the values from above, but if the first value is blank, it still displays blank. We're not quite done yet because we want to turn our formula into a reusable custom function. Then we can use that function on any workbook. So let's edit our formula. We're going to add a lambda function at the start. Lambda, opening bracket. Now our function only contains a single argument and that is the array. So let's enter that as our argument. 
Now our let function already has an argument called array. We don't need to duplicate that, so we can remove that from our let function. We can now close our lambda at the end. Let's test this function to make sure it works. So in test brackets at the end, we can select our array. I will close that bracket and calculate, and that still gives us exactly the same result, which means we're ready to copy all of our function, but not the test values at the end. I'll press Control C to copy. Then from the formulas ribbon, I can go to define name. And we're going to give this the name of fx fill down. And then in the refers to box, we can select all of that and paste our Lambda function. I'll then click OK. So let's now apply our Lambda function in cell G4. I can type equals fx fill down. We can select our array, close that bracket and calculate. And that now gives us the result that we want. And because this is a Lambda function, it means we can easily copy and paste it to any workbook and it will work with arrays of any size. And that is how we can build a custom function that fills down over blank cells. Now this was quite a complex solution, but if you want to understand how to build these kind of solutions yourself, then you should check out our Dynamic Formulas Unleashed course inside our Excel Academy. And that's also the place where you'll find our Function Vault add-in and our Quick Calc library. Just head on over to excelfthegrid.com and check it out. Then we've got loads more videos on our channel. So if you like this video, then why not check out this one next because it contains lots more array techniques. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.